those hands together to the Lord, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Higher, higher. Higher, 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 higher. Lift Jesus higher. Higher, 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 hig
unto him who is able to do far exceeding abundantly above what we ask or think by the power at work in us be the glory and honor forever. Therefore, wave your hand and let's bless him again tonight. He's done so much for us. First night, second day, morning, evening, third day. Only him could have done so much for us. Not tired of us, blessing us over and over again, increasing us in every session, enlightening us, imparting us. To him alone be glory. Give him your big hand again and please take your seat. Amen. Will you please help me on the behalf of God's servant, the host of this conference, Bishop David Oepo. On his behalf, I welcome each and everyone and help me give a warm handshake to your neighbors. Tell somebody, thank God you have been built to last. And thank God the building continues tonight. Amen. I can see somebody smiling to his or her neighbor with assurance. God is a good God. Amen. Praise God. From all over the world, again tonight, I welcome each and every one of us to this session. God is a God of morning and evening. In creation. The first day, it was morning and evening. Morning and evening. Day unto day, speak it. Night unto night, sheweth knowledge. This night, I believe that God's voice is going to come to someone again. Day unto day, uttered speech. Night unto night, sheweth knowledge. In the morning, we had his speech, one after the other. In the afternoon, we had his speech again. And tonight, knowledge shall be shown to us. I know something about life, especially in the kingdom. It is what God shows to you that turns you into a show. So tonight, God will show you something. Amen. Job prayed one prayer that led to the final deliverance from his affliction. Job 42, 5. He said, that which I see not, teach thou me. He said, I have heard thee of thee by the hearing of the hair, but now mine eye see thee. Now mine eye see thee. Tonight, God's eye, I mean, somebody's eye will see God. Amen. Seeing God is the ultimate of man's need. When you see him, your needs becomes a shadow. Seeing God brings you into the reality of life. Tonight, I pray again that according to Job's declaration, that even though we have been hearing him before now, each person's eye shall see God. In the precious name of Jesus. I have no doubt that everyone's heart is set to receive what God has in stock tonight. Will you therefore, again, rise to your feet with thanksgiving our hearts. We will be telling God, thank you because of what we saw in the morning. Thank you for the speech we had. And thank you because your voice will come very clear again tonight. Somebody thank him. Thanksgiving is appreciation for the past and anticipation for the future. We have thanked him for what, we have appreciated him for what we saw and heard. Earlier in the day, now we are thanking him in anticipation of greater things that will be revealed to us tonight. Somebody thank him. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Appreciate him. Because tonight again, God is manifesting himself. God is revealing himself. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We honor you, our King and our God. We know tonight is going to be a strange night of visitation. Touched, transformed to the glory 
and praise of your name in Jesus precious name will you excitedly expectantly join me as we receive God's servant Bishop David Oedipo to bless us at the beginning here Hallelujah. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven? Lift up your two hands to heaven again and bless him for what good thing has happened to you in this conference. Since the beginning of the day, powerful blessings in the morning, gracious blessings in the evening, and amazing blessings are waiting us tonight. Would you please lift up your two hands and give him thanks from the depth of your heart. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart. Something is breaking forth tonight and is breaking forth in your favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, thank you again. We give glory and praise to your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you and thank you and thank you. In Jesus' precious name. Speak to us tonight like never before. Because I has to hear from you. And grant us understanding. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Very shortly, Dr. Copeland will be coming in here. To give us the final dose for the night. Um, there was this book I came across several years ago titled Six Steps to Excellence in Ministry. How many have seen it before? How many have read it? You are not sure. <laughs> it's a powerful tool for ministers of the gospel, it builds courage and fortitude in you for the future that awaits you. Sometimes ago, in one of my lectures, I told the people that um, there is nothing mystical about excellence. It is one's tireless commitment to improvement that results in excellence. Tireless commitment to improvement. And if you see a man saying for 50 years he's been trying to lay foundation for what he wants to start doing right now, then it is a tireless commitment to improvement in anyone's engagement that will result in excellence. Excellence is not racial, it's not tribal, it's not national. It's someone getting committed to continuous improvement on his job is a product of our tireless commitment to improvement. If you are not willing to improve, to review your approach, you cannot improve on your results. So there must be a conscious review of what you are doing in a bid to improve on the outcome of it. The humble beginnings of his ministry will be a lot of encouragement to everyone here it did me a lot of good. It used to be a green back cover. Amen. The first day I got it was the first day I finished it. It was very inspiring and highly motivating to get anyone aim at the best in his pursuit of God and his assignment. Praise God. Amen. Built to last. Built to last. The strength of structure of any building is what determines its lifespan. Built to last. Without a structure, no organization has a future. Built to last. The height of any building is a function of the structure of that building, the, the reinforcement that goes into it, the arrangement of it. The 
Did you see the structure of creation? Everything came according to required order. Imagine if the animals came before the plants came. They would all die. Imagine the fishes coming forth before the waters came. There will be war and chaos. You could see order in creation. We serve a God of order. We serve a God of order. The reason why many ministries may never last is because there is no commitment to structure. There is no commitment to order. And you can't get anywhere without order. God said to Moses, see that thou doest all things according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 5. See that thou doest all things according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. See. So we serve a God of pattern. We serve a God of pattern. And you can't tell the potential of a ministry until order is introduced. They pass over decrees to all the churches for to keep. And then, while the church is established in the faith and increased in number daily. Chapter 16 of Acts of the Apostles, verses 4 and 5. When order was installed, growth came as a consequence of it. Order is power. It's important, therefore, that every ministry gets committed to defining great order for the institution. Otherwise, the future will be lost. All of the church organizations that have that passed the test of time were highly structured systems. Highly structured system. The charismatics have a problem here. <laughs> we have a big time problem. The goalposts keep shifting depending on the weather. Depending on the weather. There is no order. There is no order. Ministries run more or less like a private corporation. Like a private corporation. I can tell you this. Any ministry that runs like a private corporation will not see a future will not see a future. Mm. Catholic have been here over 2,000 years. Structure. Structure. They can make reference to something that happened 650 years, 650 years ago. Structure. 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 It's time to be awake to the need and the place of structure for anything that must last. For anything that must last. This is what we do in this organization. This is how we do it, and this is why we do it. This is what we do, why we do it, and how we do it. This is what we do. I mean, you are not talking about succession. You are going to live someday. Now, what happens after you are left? What happens? What happens? What happens two generations after you are left? What happens? I love the way the Living Bible puts it. That's Proverbs 24 and verse 3 and 4. It said, Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding shall we rise and please welcome God's prophet, Dr. Kenneth Copeland. Say, Come. Come and give the Lord a big hand. Can't you see the young man coming in? Come on, give this young man a big hand. He just started ministry right now. Amen. Praise God. You are welcome, sir. Shall we all be seated, please? Proverbs 24 and verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding is established. And by knowledge shall all thy chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant 
riches. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases knowledge. Now, this is how the living Bible says. Every enterprise is built by a wise planning. It becomes strong through the use of common sense and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. So the word wisdom is analyzed in that manner. It's wise planning, taking the facts into consideration, then you can expect high profiting as you build. I once observed in one of my books that praying without planning is playing without knowing. God will never plan for you. He will never plan for me. A man's heart devises his ways and God directs his steps. This is my plan. Plan your way into it. This is my purpose for you. I leave the planning of how to arrive there with you. You go devise your ways. Bring it to me for appraisal. And possible appra approval. Go and plan it. Go and go and plan what to eat for you. No matter how much faith you use. Jesus, this morning, I'd like you to please tell me what I should eat. He said, my son, wait there forever. You will never eat breakfast forever if you are waiting for me to plan what to eat. He leaves you and me to plan to fulfill his purpose in our lives. Oh, I'm going to build this tabernacle in one year. Great. Now, boy, go plan your way out. Plan the way to fulfill it. Plan the way to... I can't wait on dictate. Lord, show me what the contractor will be. He said, wait there forever. Show me how they're going to build it. He said, keep waiting until you waste away. He delivers his vision and leaves you to plan the execution of it before him. This is my thought, Jesus. How do you see it? Proverbs 16, 9. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directed his steps. We need structure to secure the future. We need structure. If the first generation of ministry didn't succeed, you have lost the vision before you died. The structure must be there. This is the vision, what we are mandated to do. This is how we have programmed to execute it. And everybody comes in place. Particularly church ministry. Any church ministry without structure is lost. You won't find it. It's a matter of time. Lost. This is what we do. This is why we do it. And that keeps the system alive. Order is beautiful. The Bible says, The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth, and by understanding has he established the heavens. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 19. The word also says, how manifold are thy works, O God? In wisdom as thou made them all, the earth is also full of their riches. Psalm 104 and verse 24. It is important to subscribe to wise planning. Praying without planning is playing without knowing. Planning without programming is living in the woods. Your, your GPS is not working. You are just lost in the wilderness. And programming without pursuit is dining with the dead. It will never see the light of day. Any vision you don't pursue, you have lost. Any vision you don't drive is gone. We must subscribe to planning before the Lord. That makes a difference. Jesus, thank you for this vision. Now, these are my ideas on how to go by it. These are my ideas on how to go by it. Oh, Lord, how do I go about it? The first three days at River Ahava, Ezra chapter 8 and verse 23, to find the right way for them, for their children. To find that we besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. You start from verse 20. Then I proclaimed the fast, 21, at River Hava, 
that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. So we fasted and God had us. This is the plan. How do I go about it, Jesus? Then you ask sincere questions, he delivers answers to you. For instance, I'm going to build this tabernacle in one year. Jesus, how about? Technically, no contractor would take that. And then inspiration came. Send for your sons who are in building disciplines on the mission field. It's a faith project. It will take faith-fit people to run it. Then I sent for them. And the hand of God came upon them. That building was done in-house by pastors. By inspired insight on how to go about it. I think many ministers are grounded today because we will not take responsibility for planning. Oh God, come and plan. He said, no, I don't plan. I unveil my purpose, leave you to plan your way into it, and I will help you when you need my help. This is so important. God won't plan how you run your family for you. He won't plan that. You have to take responsibility to plan it. He won't plan that for you. In Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 12, the Bible said, He had made the earth by his power. He had established the world by his wisdom. And has stretched out the heavens by his discretion. Then we need discretion. The smartest way to go about a given task, we need it. Because the labor of the foolish will is every one of them because he knows not how to go to the city. We need to seek the way, the right way to getting things done and take responsibility in putting the facts together and planning the way forward. We need a structure. I just told them about this book before you came. Six Steps to Excellence in Ministry. What it did for me. It used to be a green cover in those days. And I said to them, I came to discover that excellence is simply a product of one's tireless commitment to improvement. Tireless commitment. If after 50 years you have just laid foundation for what you'll be doing, it shows a tireless commitment to improvement. There is nothing mystical about excellence. It's not that somebody is ordained for excellence, another one is supposed to be ordinary. No. Commitment to continuous improvement. And I want all of us, you may have had copies before. I have brand new copies, a set of them in my room because of the value of it. Uh, it's important. We must embark on building a structure that will sustain the ministry. We must embark on it. Our ministry went wide into that <laughs> and came out with this book, which we call our operational manual. This book is not subject to review until 50 years. You can't keep shifting the goalpost. Prayer was prayed. Facts were put together. Cross-referencing of age-long church organizations came out with this. Anything that happens to anybody is in a section here. And he has it. This is what we do. This is why we do it. And this is how we do it. You subscribe, sign and that becomes your constitution that guides your operation within this system. And with a vow on it, it is not subject to review until after 50 years. There is no perfect constitution in the world, but people have kept faith to the constitution of their places, their nations, and have been thriving on it. You can't do this one with memos and all that. It will be lost. Put in a book. What thou seest, write in a book, not in a memo. 
write in a book and send to the churches. For all founders of ministries here, please walk. We went through the Baptist system, 780 pages was their own operational manual. Went through Assemblies of God, went through Four Square Church, quite young. Went through the Catholic Church organization, quite some age. The charismatics need order. We need order. We need set order, not assumed order. We need set order to run. I don't have any will about this ministry. The will is here. It's in this red book. This is the will of God for this commission. You are interested, you check it. So session is well defined. It's not something you are guessing about. It's not when you are about to die and you can't even know who is there again. They say, who is coming to be there? Jackson. They say, who is Jackson? One Jackson like that. <laughs> and then they can't find him. There's no more called Jackson anymore. He has gone. He's gone to be with the Lord, perhaps. But instead of saying something where you can't see anything correct, put it down where your brain is correct. <laughs> Amen. And then you, you'll be at rest. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So we sat on this. We, we sweat on it. We read it page by page. Whole council. Did correction one by one. All kinds of things. To come out with this. I respect this book. Anything, all the thing here is not needed now. After 50 years, we cannot add it to it. But we won't add anything to this one. I won't subtract from it. Is prayed through, is planned through, is structured through, and then we're all at rest. This is how to secure the future. No guesswork. God is a God of order. We must set order in the system. I knew a number of ministries that we came growing up together as young people, they are no longer there. Zero structure. The ministry is in the pocket of the man of God. And absolutely so. It depends on which side of the bed he wakes up. Wake up today and say, no. Everybody, don't come to work tomorrow. Don't come next tomorrow. Because there is no order. Traveling. How many of you want to travel? How many of you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, you're all traveling. <laughs> what is the budget for travel? I don't know. No one here will eat the future of his ministry. Amen. Whatever the Lord does shall be forever. Let's settle down with Jesus. Believe in order. Pay the price of praying to set in order. Reasoning to set in order. Getting the fast together and setting order. For instance, the Lord called me to ministry. And then, how do you go about it? Jesus now you have called me. How do I go about it? Light began to come. Light began to come. He didn't tell me, start fellowship. He didn't tell me, do this every week. No. Plan my way in his presence into what should be done to keep the vision alive. And under two weeks that the mandate was delivered, the platform was set. The platform was set. And step by step by step, you can't believe we had an executive council when the ministry had no shape, we had an executive council that we would sit down in the meeting. Three of them are here. We sit down in the meeting till 1 a.m. in the morning. What are you planning? Ministry. <laughs> Amen. Ministry. Every church organ, every ministry of the gospel requires structure to secure the future. Everyone. May I therefore request that all of us who are founders of churches and ministries, go and start work on developing an appropriate structure upon which to run. Whatever wisdom builds endures. Wisdom founded the earth. The earth is still in shape. Search out the heavens. The galaxies are still in place. Everything wisdom builds and deals. We must find the way forward. 
I can't tell how many church organizations we studied, but we studied quite a number of them. Quite a number of them, including Asian Orthodox ones. How did they survive 1,000 years and still have footprints on the earth? You know, I have never entered the Catholic Church in my life. There's nothing wrong with that, but I've never been privileged to be there. But I can tell you where Catholic began, how they got to where they are, because of the desperate search to find what makes systems endure. I'm going to be here for a long time, but I won't always be here as president. No, you can change my assignment at any time. But the question is, what will remain? The structure. How do they feel it? Defined. Who qualifies to fill a place? Defined. There is no less try. There is no try. It's here. You are going to be president. There, is this, there are these terms that must be fulfilled in your life. And your time is over. You want to disengage? There is this procedure for disengagement. All of them put together. There is no future for a lazy man. Let's wake up and walk. Jesus said, I must walk. The was from the center where it is day, the night comet, where no man can walk. I don't respect any church organization that runs like a private institution. It has no future. There must be a structure that defines the way things must be done and a commitment on the part of the leader to those terms. Subscribing to them in full so that others can follow suit. It's a big task, but easy to accomplish when you believe in it. Shall we rise to our feet? Let me ask us to lift up our two hands right now and ask the Lord for grace and for wisdom to develop appropriate structure for our various ministries. Young, vibrant ministries, you require a structure to secure the future. Anointed to the teeth, you require a structure to secure the future. Ministry is not a private business. It's a Jesus business. And you and I are only appointed as four men, four men, head liberals, head liberals, chief executive liberals, chief executive liberals. That's who we are. We want to do it to please him. Ask God for wisdom right now. You want to ask God for wisdom? There is no finish line in the school of wisdom. At any crossroad, you ask God, what is the way forward? What is the way forward? This ministry must have a future. This ministry must secure its future. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. It's my pleasure tonight, as always, to bring, to minister to us and release impartation of grace on our life by the Holy Ghost. One of my most revered mentors in my work with God, whose influence over the last 40 years is unmistakable. I met this young man 40 years ago through his books. And the words and insight of this young man has added inestimable value to my life. I was speaking to the pastors. I said, when they write anything for you, this is a young man, Kenneth Copeland, that you'll be happy to see it. Young man, Kenneth Copeland. Young man, Kenneth Copeland. And I promise them I'll push all the envelopes to you so you can see young man, Kenneth Copeland. <laughs> Amen. You are always a blessing, and we are always excited to have you in our midst. Please join me together and welcome God's servant, Dr. Kenneth Copeland, as he ministers to us tonight. Shout amen. amen. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Father, we bless and praise.
praise you tonight. I thank you. I thank you for this dear man, this giant of faith, a man from whom I have learned much, has taught me many things, especially in the arena of praise and worship, dancing before the Lord, things about faith in God, in the realm of financial prosperities and in the realm of covenant. I love him and I thank you for his life and ministry. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You going to sing? No. No? <laughs> I'm going to dance. Yeah, you'll dance. Amen. And I, tonight I want to thank the first lady, Faith. Hallelujah. Isn't she absolutely radiant? She is so beautiful, and we love her so. Turn and shake hands with at least three people now. Smile, I mean smile, and say, be blessed. Then you may be seen. How sweet the 
sound that saved our I was so lost, I was blind, I was lost and blind, but now, oh, but now, but now I can see. stood by and they watched this man they'd heard him preach before no one could ever be worthy of such love I never find when he was on the cross I was on his mind the look of love was on his face stain his crimson red robes drained crimson red his eyes were on that crowd that day but he looked ahead in time when he was on the cross 
and honor and glory tonight. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Jesus has never, say never. never. He has never, ever, not yet, done anything for himself. Did it all for you. Did it all for me. I can hardly stand it. strength. 
if you're weak, it's because you're low on joy. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, how do you get it? What do you mean get it? You already got it. It's on the inside of you. Praise will bring it up. But you don't, hey, joy is not a feeling. Uh-uh, joy is somebody and his name is Jesus. Oh, yeah. Love is not a feeling. Love is somebody and it's God. Amen. Amen. Oh, I tell you. Well, but Brother Copeland, I just don't feel like laughing. That's when you need to laugh. It's when you don't feel like it. When the devil got you feeling Mighty low. Ha, ha, ha. You hear me, devil? Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. God sits in his heavens and he laughs at the devil. We have been raised up together to sit with him together so we can laugh together at the devil. Ha 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 Oh yeah ha 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 You keep laughing you make it to a hundred ha ha Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I have made up my mind and I have made up my heart. I am going to die young at an old age. I'm going to tell you something. Hey, you listen to me? Bishop and I, we're going to get so old that old people call us old. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, where was I? <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Father, we do bless you tonight. We thank you for your presence. We're the blessed people. The shining light of no longer what is called the dark continent. No, no, no. Africa is now called the continent of light. Hallelujah. The continent of God's presence, God's glory. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Ah, oh, Bishop, thank you, sir, for allowing me to be here. I tell you, this is my African home. And um, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, now somebody been messing with my clock. <laughs> I 
That's all it took. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Built to last. Don't you like that? Built to last. I don't want to, I do not want a car that's not built to last. I don't want a suit that's not built to last. I don't want shoes that are not built to last. I don't want anything that's not built to last. Hallelujah. And the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the everlasting gospel. Oh, that's shouting crowd. Hallelujah. That, that's what you get for getting on this front row. <laughs> I step on your feet and stumble around on you, you know. Forgive me, I can't help it. <laughs> I could, but I don't want to, you understand? That ain't kill I go over here and step on these people's feet for a while. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Built to last. Everything that is lasting must have a solid foundation. Nothing will last unless it is built on God's word. No ministry, no ministry can be built successfully on the personality of its pastor, the personality of the ones in ministry office. No, no. Now, having a good personality is fine but you can't build a ministry on that. You cannot build a ministry on the gifts of the Spirit. You can't do that. You will eventually go spiritually bankrupt. And the thing that happens when a person begins to build a ministry on the gifts of the Spirit, now don't misunderstand me. I, oh, I do, I believe in the, manifestations of the Spirit of God. I live in it. These things manifest in my life. But a person that attempts to build a ministry around that will come to the place where he or she will attempt to perform. And these manifestations are as the Spirit wills. And there are times as he wills, when there won't be manifestations. Many, many times that's because there needs to be firm teaching of the word. Amen. So, what do you build a ministry upon? Faith in God's word. Faith in his love. Faith love, hope, these three. Can you say amen? amen? All right. Built to last. Let's look in our Bibles again this evening. How many of you are here this morning? May I see your hands? Whoa, we had a good time, didn't we? You didn't have a good time this morning? I'm going to try again. Did you have a good time this morning? <laughs> you had me bothered there for a minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Matthew, please. And we will look in the 16th chapter. Of Matthew's gospel, verse 13. 
when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. Jesus answered unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This rock foundation. I will build my church on the rock of revealed knowledge. Unless God reveals, unless he opens our understanding to the word, then it's just head knowledge. Amen. Faith begins where the will of God is known not wondered about, known. How do you know the will of God? God's will and his word are one and the same. He doesn't will one thing and say another. Now, revealed knowledge or revelation knowledge is knowledge that comes directly from the Holy Spirit within you to your spirit and then to your mind, not the other way around. In natural carnal education, and so, which is, which is not a bad thing, but that's just what it is, just natural education. That is gained through the five physical senses. Amen. It's gained by listening or reading through the senses. So we could rightly call that sense knowledge. And it isn't a bad thing. But it's not the best. And if sense knowledge is the only thing you have of the word of God, all you have is religion. Amen. Amen. Now, faith does not walk by direction of the five physical senses. We do not walk by sight or by what we feel. If all you believe is something you can see or something you can feel, you're still in your head. You're still in your five physical senses. And faith is not of the head. Faith is of the spirit, the heart of man. Amen. Say this. I'm not moved, I'm not moved. by what I see. Or by what I feel. I am moved by what I believe. And I believe God's eternal word. Wow. Now, when you move over into that arena, 
You're hearing, you're seeing, but the information is not just going to your mind. The information is going through your eye gates and your ear gates into your heart. And you just be going along. And you're hearing pastor preach or you're hearing bishop preach or or maybe you're doing the preaching and you see the light go off in somebody's face and a big smile comes up, you know they got it. They may have heard it time and time and time and time again, but that day they got it. You've had that happen to you? read the same scripture over and over and over, but one day you heard it. One day it got down in your heart and you said, whoa. And you punched the person next to you and said, did you see that? He said, no, I didn't see anything. What are are you talking about? And you think, what's the matter with you, man? (laughs) Hallelujah. You didn't see something with your natural eye. You saw something with the eye of your spirit. Now, Jesus said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. He that hath eyes to see, let him see. Huh? Well, everybody had these ears. He's talking about the eyes and ear of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, that is the raw upon which Jesus has built the church. Who do you say that I am? They say, well, some of them say you're John the Baptist, you know, some of them say you this, some of them say you that. And Peter jumped up and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Suddenly he got it. None of the rest of them at that point knew who he was. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, no, thank you, Lord. Yeah, okay. uh. Now, I'd like to spend a lot of time in that, but the Lord said, no, you need to go. Now, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. I said this to our morning class and uh, for the benefit of those that were not here this morning, I want to say this to you. The Lord led me some time ago to read the book of 1 John every day. It's only five chapters. Here we're talking about revelation that most Christian people do not have. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about religious people. I'm talking about born again, Holy Ghost, baptized, tongue-talking Christians. Most of them don't know what we're going to see tonight. And you need to read that little book over and over and over and over and over again till it gets down in your spirit being. 16th verse. Chapter 4. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. We understand that God is love, but don't believe it. He doesn't have love. He 
is love. Dwell on it. Dwell on it. Dwell on it. The word love, particularly to English-speaking people, has become a slang word. Don't you love my new suit? No, I don't love it. God is love. Well, I just love my mother's pie. I love my mother and I enjoy the pie. I don't love pie. I don't love popcorn. I don't love pizza. I, 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 but that's what people say all the time because of a lack of honor for that word love because God is love and there needs to be great reverence when you say that word. We love God and we love his word and we're, we love people. Glory to God. We love the gospel. We love preaching. We love healing. We, we, we love seeing people get baptized in the Holy Ghost and set free. But we don't love things. We enjoy things. But we don't love them. Love not the things of this world. Okay? And then the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, Tell those that are rich in this world not to be high-minded, ready to distribute, for God gives us all things richly to enjoy. You know why he does that? Because he loves you. He is love. He's not against things. He's not against you having things. He's not against you having money and more money than you need so you can help somebody else. God needs you healed. God needs you strong. God needs you rich and well supplied. There's far too many poor people in the earth and it's time you and I did something about it. And just giving to the poor is only temporary. It's when you preach the gospel to the poor that it changes things. Amen? amen. Say amen if you believe. Amen. Yes, glory. Now, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. The word God, for the most part, I'm talking about in the English language came out of European theology and mostly German back many, many, many years ago. God has names. He wasn't just called God. He has names. Hey, Tracy, you got a name, brother. Yes, sir. That's your name, then. Uh-huh. God's name is El Shaddai. The God that's more than enough. <laughs> oh, that's one of his names. He is Jehovah Rapha. That's one of his names. He's the healer. Hallelujah. See, for, for healing to pass away, God would have to change his name, and that is not going to happen. Can you see where we're going with this? We just call him God. No. Oh, there's much more to him than that. Hallelujah. When he came up to Abraham in the 17th chapter of Genesis, he said, I am the almighty God. 
actually, what he said was, I am El Shaddai. I'm the God that's more than enough. And I'm going to make covenant with you. Whoa. How would you like for somebody to walk up to you and say, I am the almighty God. What? I am the God that's more than enough. And I love you, little man. <laughs> oh, can you, can, you, can you stand it? No, I can't. That's what, that's what joy comes from. Man. God coming to a man. Just a plain, just, just a plain man. And say, I am the almighty God. And I want you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you, I don't see how you sit there. I can't stand it. But then I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> and I come to a place like this where God is honored and the praise of God is in the heart and lips of men and women like David and Faith Oedipal. And you see what faith in God has done. And you begin to understand that we are covenanted to thee. One who loves you. The one who gave himself for you. The one who went to hell for you. Love did that for you. Love bore your sickness, diseases, weaknesses, and pains. Love took your sin in his own body on the tree. Love did that. Amen. Amen. Burned in hell for three days and nights. Bore what no man ever before him bore, neither shall any man after him bear it, because no man bore it all. But he did. Why? Because he loves you. That is... Agape, Abba, Father, the loving Father. Hallelujah. Well, you see, nothing you can do can cause Him to love you more. It's not based on your or my performance. No. He just loves. That's who he is. Amen. There's nothing you or I or anybody else could do that is so horrible and terrible to cause him not to love you. No. Now you can grieve him. You can hurt him. But you can't keep him from loving you. A number of years ago, a man who had killed 21 women, murdered 21 women, serial killer. And he kidnapped a woman <laughs> that knew the Lord. He stole her car and he's running from the police. And he told her, he said, woman, shh shut up or I'll kill you. She said, you're not going to kill the only person that ever loved you. Woman, you don't know who I am. She said, no, I don't know who you are, but I know this. Jesus loves you. Boy, it made him so mad. He said, woman, shut up, I'll kill you. Oh. No, she said, you ain't going to kill me. <laughs> and he just, he just went into a rage, screaming at her. Shut her mouth. 
She said, well, okay, if I can't talk, can I listen to my tape? He said, anything to shut you up? She had one of my tapes in her cassette player in her car. She turned that on. And he's, he's, he's listening to this. Suddenly, he slams on the brakes, stop and said, who said that? And he looked in the back seat. She said, what are you talking about, Stephen? He said, somebody in this car. She said, there's nobody in this car. It's you and me. She said, what did someone say? Well, he said, Stephen, this is your last chance, son. But he said, you don't know what I've done. There's no way God could love me. And she began to tell him about the love of God. Amen. He accepted Jesus as his Lord. Number of days after that, I baptized him in water in the county jail in San Antonio, Texas. He and I became good friends. And he eventually was executed with legal, lethal injection. I was at his execution. And I was the last person to visit with him. He became an expert on prayer while he was on death row. Oh, he got every, they began to call it life row. He got everybody on death row born again, man. I mean, he's getting them saved, baptizing the Holy Ghost. Say, Brother Copeland, that's a serial killer. No, no, the serial killer's dead. This is a new creature in Christ. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I don't care how many people he's killed. God loved him. Yes. And the love of Jesus, Jesus has already paid the price for all that murder. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. So I said, Stephen, do me a favor. He said, yeah, sure. I said, you know, the scripture said grace is more than enough. Yeah. I said, let me know, brother, if grace is more than enough. Yeah, he said, I'll do it. Well, you know, they had him strapped to that hospital-type gurney and his hands are strapped down, of course, all but his head. He could move his head like this. But, and they had IVs in, in both arms. Up above there was the box where the, the chemicals in, in the, the tubes that once they turn that thing on, the chemicals begin to flow. And it makes a loud noise. When you hear that clang, you know you're going to be dead in a matter of seconds. So the warden, Warden Lawrence Harvey, <laughs> good, just a good friend of mine, spirit, Holy Ghost, baptized warden in that penitentiary in the state of Texas. He said, uh, now I'm standing, uh, <clears throat> there's a little fence here like this about so high I'm standing behind that fence and I'm about as far as from here to the front row from the warden and Stephen and he's strapped down the warden said Stephen you got any last words son man he threw his head and then there's, a, there's quite a crowd in there there were, there were family of people that he had killed and there are law enforcement officers in there and Oh, my. I never did know the exact number, but I, I would say there are probably 25, maybe 30 people in there. And he raised up. He said, let me tell you something. 
He said if Jesus and the Holy Ghost can do for somebody like me, uh, can you imagine what he could do for you? And he got the preaching man. <laughs> and, and finally, Warden Harvey said, uh, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen, uh, f forgive me, son, for interrupting, but we got business to take care of here. Oh, yeah, he said, that's all right. That's all right, Warden, thank you. And he laid back down, and he looked over there at me, and that thing it, the, made a clanging noise. Bang! He looked over there at me and gave me two thumbs up oh with a great God. big smile. Oh More than enough. Oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I stood there and watched him. The moment his spirit left his body, his body lunged one time. And he's asleep in Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Come on and tell the Lord. Come on and tell the Lord. Think about that. Think about that. Every invitation you give to the lost, every time you're on the street and you get a chance to, to say something to somebody, put that big old smile on your face and say, uh, did you know that God really does love you? He loves you. He's loved you all your life. You just didn't know it. Yeah, but you don't know what I've done. No, I don't, but I know what he's done. Amen. And he bore your sins, and he has blotted them out, and he has forgotten them. Isaiah 43, 25. Amen. That's the foundation upon which the church is built. Let's give the Lord praise to now, thank you, Lord Jesus. Someone was just healed of a very, very sore throat. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Was that you? Or was that, who was that, somebody? Oh, yeah, hallelujah. Oh, uh, there she is, right there. There he is, there she is, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is good, isn't it? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear. Say no fear. There is no fear in love. Well, of course not. God is love. See, that, that your, your mind needs to be renewed to the point that anybody says love or says God, your mind says love. They say love, your mind says God. Where it's, it's never separated. No fear in love. Well, of course not. God is love. No fear in him. Couldn't possibly be. Amen. Now, you're born of God. Help me. You're born of love. Amen. I'm going to let you think about that. You're not just born of God. You're not just born from above. When you're born again, you were born of love. Love gave birth to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. Now, there is no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now look at 1 John 2, 5. 
But whoso keepeth his word or keepeth his commandments, in him verily is the love of God perfected. You see that? All right. Now chapter 4, verse 12. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Practice makes perfect. Can you see it? Practice Loving perfects the love. Let me say it again. Practicing loving perfects the love that is within us. Romans 5, 5. The love of God who is love has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is the Spirit of love. Hallelujah. Now, as you meditate on these things, look in the 13th chapter of Romans with me, please. Romans chapter... 13 and we'll look at the ninth verse. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We love as he gave commandment. How did he give commandment? Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now listen to what else he said. Love one another even as I have loved you. Whoa. Jesus is saying, because God has shed abroad by the Holy Ghost his love in our hearts, in our born again human spirit. We have the same love in us that's in him. We have the same love in us that's in Jesus. Turn with me to the 17th chapter of John's gospel. And look at the very last verse, the 26th verse. Of John 17. And I have to, Jesus is praying just, just, just moments before he went to the cross. I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it. Now, now look at this. That the love wherewith thou, talking to the Father, thou hast loved me may be in them. That's, all, that, that's unimaginable by the human mind. You have to grasp that by revelation from the Spirit of God. 
He said, Father, the love wherewith you love me, I'm going to that cross and I am going to fix it. I am going to be made a curse there. And the love wherewith you, Father, have loved me may be shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. Do you see where those two scriptures come together? Yes, yes. Romans 5, 5, John 17, 26. Huh? He said, that's what I'm going to go do. They didn't understand it that day, but they did after he did it. Love did that for you. But now, it's in there. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Even as, <laughs> hallelujah, oh, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you, Lord, makes you want to sing, thank you. Verse 31, Ephesians chapter 4. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. There it is again. Even as God, we can forgive just like God. You don't forgive because you feel like forgiving. You forgive because it's a commandment. Amen. We'll go somewhere with that in just, just a moment if we have time. But I want you to see this. Christ is not Jesus' last name. And a lot of religious folks think it is, or they think it's some kind of title. No, it's a Greek word that never was translated. It's the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah. It literally means anointed. Now, why was Jesus called the Christ? Why was he called the anointed? It was not because they had a revelation of the fact that he was the anointed one. Now, Peter did. Thou art the anointed, son of the living God. See, that's what he actually said. He said, the King James says, Christ. He said, you are the anointed. But why did they call him that? Because that's what he preached. Everywhere he went, Luke 4, 18, we see the, the message, but he preached it throughout all Judea, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now, he preached the Spirit of the Lord, he, he opened the, the, the book at what you and I know as the 61st chapter of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. Now what does that say in Greek? It says, for he has christened me. That's Greek anointed. For some reason, they chose not to translate it. So it got lost. 10th chapter of Isaiah. In that day, his burden shall be removed from off your shoulder 
and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing, God's burden removing, yoke destroying power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now Jesus preached that very message throughout all Judea everywhere he went. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captive. Most people don't realize Jesus was and is a preacher. He preached. If you believed what he said, the anointing would meet you. If you didn't, it wouldn't. That's simple. It's that simple today. Amen. So now, look carefully at what he said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and to preach recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, which is supernatural debt cancellation. He preached it everywhere he went. So they called him the anointed. They didn't realize he was Messiah. They called him anointed because that's what he preached. What did they call John? The Baptist? His last name wasn't Baptist. He's John the baptizer. He preached baptism. Do you remember the mother of the little woman that had him murdered? She said, bring me, she didn't call him John the Baptist. She said, bring me John Baptist's head on a plate. They called Jesus anointed because that's what he preached. They called John Baptist because that's what he preached. It's not rank. Of course, it's precious to us. Amen. But they didn't know who he was. But they believed him. The anointing was there. He preached as a prophet. Called himself a prophet. A prophet under the Abrahamic covenant because he said a prophet has no honor in his own hometown. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you, are, are you getting, are, are you getting something here? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, glory to God. Thank you. I said all of that to get us back to Ephesians 4.32. Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for the sake of the anointing, we are the body of Christ. We are the body of that anointing. We are anointed carriers. We, that anointing, that burden-removing, yoke-destroying power is resident on the inside of every born-again child of God. We are carriers of it. We are of the body of the anointed. Amen. That anointing is in you right now. I can prove it to you from right there in 1 John. You have an anointing abiding in you now, John. And you know all things. Hallelujah. Does that send a thrill through you? It does me. My, my. I got to looking at my hands one day many years ago, and I thought, whoa. I just read the scripture where he said, I will walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the revelation of that struck me. I could see it. There it is on the, on the screen. I'll walk in them. I'll be their God. They'll be my people.
the Spirit of God. He's not just in here. He's in your hands. He's in your legs. You have the mind of Christ. Uh, Translate it. We have the mind of the anointed one. Our minds have access to the same anointing that Jesus' mind was while he was in the earth. That's awesome. Love did that for you. Amen. Don't go around calling yourself dumb. Well, I just wish I wasn't so dumb. Well, shut up. That's the dumbest thing you did, calling yourself dumb. You have the mind. You have the mind of the anointed one. Really? Yeah, really. (laughs) Because he's in you. He's in here. Love himself is in here. And you have the strength and power to love the same as he does. You just don't know as much about it yet. (laughs) But we're learning. Amen. Amen. We're learning. See? Hands. Say it. I... I am, am full, full of, of God. God. And he walks in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's who we are. In Christ Jesus. Translate it. That's who we are in the anointed one's anointing. Now, being tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, who is love, even as God for the sake of the anointing has forgiven you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory be to God in his heavens. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. (laughs) Perfected love cast out fear. You, me, anybody can manage fear. But love Filled faith casts it out. No born again child of God has any business with fear on the inside of us. You don't have any more business being sick than you have business being in sin. And you don't have any more business having fear in you Because Jesus paid the price for it. It has been totally defeated. All we have to do is take up that authority. Amen. Amen. Satan starts running back up there. Let me ask you, what word are you standing on? Well, you know, Brother Copeland, I just believe God will heal me. That won't work here. What word are you standing on? Well, you know, not, uh, I, not really anything in particular. Well, that's what you're going to get. Nothing in particular. Let the word fight its own fight. That word, his word, 
The word of faith is filled with delivering power. And Satan comes up in there trying to lie to you and tell you you're not going to get it this time. Pull that sword on him. <laughs> and let that devil run up on the sword of the spirit a time or two. Amen. Amen. By his stripes, I was healed. If I was, I am. I don't feel healed. I don't look healed. I am healed. I don't ever get through. I just quit. <laughs> Are you like that? I, I mean, you get into a moment like this. The longest I have ever preached at, at one time was 11 and a half hours. Wow. Wow. And <laughs> enjoyed every minute. <laughs> no, no, come on. I ain't going to do you that way tonight. <laughs> oh, well, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I could. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're so strong and you are pulling it out of my spirit till I, I, I could. I could just stand here and just, and just go to morning. The, but the Apostle Paul did that, didn't he? Uh -huh. Yeah. Jesus preached for three days. Nobody went home. I'm working on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's stand, please. Hallelujah to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him. Golden Gala, que de lite crobostico, comadana nakadala, que badara da canona mana, dole falada cadebeke, gido no cantana, nan greme este espos como boho, cat adge mala don proba de galeriri, claxtum e predesde, frapa, rabadan. Cred crunos dog shiri la la kokoko takidi kala unsk. If you will learn to follow the love command, you will begin to see the leading of my hand. Guided in following that command, the spirit and the voice of the Lord's hand will be in the planning and the purpose that you heard in the session before, and now the love command has opened the door. For I spoke in my word and made it very clear that if you walked in the love command, I would come down here and manifest myself among you as I spoke through the apostle John and that power of my spirit shall now come upon. It will come upon you to love people beyond all traps and all deceit. It will come on you to love people and not walk by fear of men. And that way your ministry can be empowered and complete. For the gifts of the Spirit have all of their force in the love command. Walk in that guidance and you will see upon your ministry my mighty hand. Bye. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise God for it. Come on. Praise God for it. Praise God for it. Praise God for it. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help me. Help me. Help me. Let's praise God. Lunge blabadora, cavagos, 
Kabagosh, 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 Manana, Malalan Dondor Badadeli, Kreda Dash Dalala Kabara, The healing, the healing anointing is moving throughout this whole congregation. Be blessed. Be healed. Prosper. Be strong in the Lord. In the power of his might. His anointing be on you now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, like I said, I don't ever get through, but it's time to quit. <laughs> and I'll be here in the morning. Glory to God. I love you one and all. Let's give the Lord Jesus a big, big clap offering. Let's celebrate him and magnify him. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Wave those two hands to heaven, everyone. If anything ever got through to you in the course of that ministration, give God thanks for it. No more room for the tormentors. The love of God is perfected in us. We have the capacity to forgive like Jesus. We have the inner strength to forgive like Jesus. We have the grace to forgive and let go like Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord sent one word into Jacob. He translated him to a nation. One word. One word from heaven can turn anyone's life around 360 degrees. Now, I'd like you to just reflect. Did you catch one word? Are you sure you catch one word? Yes. Your answer will not be, well, nothing in particular. It was just a long, it was a powerful teaching. What did you get there? Now, I'd like you to hold it fast. If you like, pick your note. I say, this one thing I caught, and I won't let go. This one thing I caught, and I won't let go. This one thing I caught, and I won't let go. This one thing. I caught and I won't let go. This one thing, I caught and I won't let go. Now, if you really catch anything, lift up your hands and thank God for it in particular. Thank God for it in particular. And thank God for it in particular. Celebrate Jesus for it in particular. Would you give God thanks for it? In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. In the name of Jesus, we have given thanks. This meeting is coming to an end tomorrow. That is what you desire to return with. I may have a desire for which you want to return. You've had quite a few sessions the whole of yesterday, the evening of the first day, and we're closing tomorrow morning. 
what must I return with? Would you lift up your two hands and mention it to God in particular? What must I return with? What grace have you identified? What light have you caught? And what do you want to return with as a result? Expectation is the wisdom for every manifestation. What you don't expect, you cannot experience. I must return with one, two, three. I must return with this one, two, three, four, five. I must return with this. I am determined to return with the following. One, two, three, four, five. I am determined to return with the following. One, two, three, four, five. I am determined to return with the following. One, two, three, four, five. Lekotia le karada to sale. Ebrakalo shagile kote prodia. Meruda le tasiza la paradosa. Would you celebrate God? I must return with the following. No guesswork. No assumptions. I am returning with the following from this mountain. I'm returning with the following from this mountain. I'm returning with the following from this mountain. I'm returning with the following from this mountain. Come on, lift up your two hands. Call those things forth. Call them forth. Faith will always call those things that be not as though they were. What must happen between now and the next conference? What must happen between now and the next month of May 2018? Because you are still alive and you are solid on ground. What must I return with? And what must be my testimony in the next one year? What must be my testimony in the next one year? What must be my testimony in the next one year? Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. You find Jesus saying, What would you have me do for you? Have mercy. Say, no, no, get specific. What do you want me to do for you? Maybe you still want to work on that tonight. And let God know in specific terms what you must return with tomorrow morning. What you must return with tomorrow morning. Hey, what do you want me to do for you? I want double of the Spirit of God. That's upon you. Oh, you've asked a hard thing, but you have to ask something. What must I return with? Whatever you have called for tonight will return with you. Amen. Whatever you have called for tonight will return with you. Amen. Wave those hands to heaven and thank God for the day, morning, afternoon, night, whatever thing has happened, give God thanks for it. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Please, you may be seated in God's presence this evening. In this great service tonight, it is offering time. I said it is offering time. If you have not done so yet, please quickly begin to package your worship offering. Like we were made to understand earlier in the day, also, for those packaging a seed for Dr. Kenneth Copeland, you package it accordingly. If it's a check, you write it to David Oedipo Ministries International. Worship offering as well to that same account, David Oedipo Ministries International. But indicate on the envelope, if it's a prophet offering for Dr. Kenneth Copeland, you put his name on that envelope and it will be dropped in the 
offering basket. Shout hallelujah. The Bible says, there is he that scatters and yet increases. There is he that withholds more than his meat and yet tended more to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat and he that waters himself shall be watered unto. Shall we rise on our feet tonight? Lift up that offering unto the Lord and speak to him from the depth of your heart as you present that offering with appreciation unto the Lord right now. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of coming before you tonight as a sower. There is nothing that we have received that has not come from above. Let us appreciate him. He is the one who ministers seed to us as sowers and at the same time multiplies the seed that is sown. Our Father, we have come tonight with gratitude in our heart for the privilege of approaching you as a sower. Let this seed be acceptable in your sight in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please keep that seed lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, in accordance with your word, we have come tonight in faith, presenting our seed out of that which you have given unto us. We are presenting this unto you. Let it be acceptable in your sight in the name of Jesus. For every giver tonight, let there be multiplied returns in the name of Jesus Christ. Glorify yourself in the life of everyone. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Please, you may be seated comfortably in his presence as the praise team leads us in celebrating God.
See better days ahead. How many can see greater days ahead? You don't get weary saying ahead the beauties that lie ahead of you. Let him that think he knows anything know that he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. May no one here miss the great days ahead. Amen. Yes, there are great days ahead, every child of God and every ministry. For the path of the justified is as a shining light that shines more and more and more unto the perfect day. In the name of Jesus Christ, no one here will miss the enviable future ahead of him or her. In the name of Jesus Christ, no one misses out on that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No one misses out on that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tomorrow we're going to begin at 7.30 in the morning. Is that okay? Yes. Amen. We're going to start at 7.30 in the morning. Get on. Amen. It's same venue, please. Same here. Uh, 7.30 in the morning, we're going to be gathered here and believe God for the outpouring of his spirit. How I many are eager to see that? The last day is everybody's day. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus cried, saying, If any man thirst, whatever looks like a dry aspect of your life or ministry, come prepared for a visitation. Amen. It will come from singing. It will come from praying. It will come from the ministry of the word. It will come through prophecy. It will come through insight. It will come through enemies. Come prepared. Any area you want to experience, a jump, a leap. Just come prepared, come prepared, come thirsty, come desperate, come panting for the grace of God to come down upon your life. Don't come casually or don't bother coming at all. Oh, every man that thirsted, come. Don't come casually, come desperately, come longing for an encounter with Jesus. Remember in Acts chapter 1 verse 3, he manifested himself 40 days with many infallible proofs. And it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We are still within the 40 days of post-resurrection celebration. It goes on to 25th of May. Expect to see God. Except the resurrected Christ to give you an encounter of a lifetime. He walked up to me just last week and he said, wait a minute. Wait! 
a ten minute. And then just give one striking instruction. It's poor joy in my soul. Jesus is real. You won't miss his reality. Yeah. And tomorrow's service, mm, it will be a memorable service. Yeah. You'll be, remind, be, be remembering it for life. Yeah. Because of the impact. Just be all I. He said, if you see me when I'm caught up, it shall be yours. Just be all eyes. Let your spirit man be said. I'm in for an encounter of a lifetime. And I won't miss it for anything. The time again is 7.30 in the morning. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Lift up those two hands. Celebrate Jesus one more time. Give him glory and praise. We can never thank God enough. We can only thank him some more. So let's thank him some more. Let's thank him some more. Let's thank him some more. Let's thank him some more tonight. What a night. What a refreshing. What a blessing. What a glory. What a honor we have received from the Lord. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we exalt you. We lift you on high. We celebrate you in Jesus. Mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. 7.30 a.m. is when we are meeting as directed. Mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen.